Well, thank you for joining us today, Mike. It's really exciting to sit down with you. We're in the garage right now where they've been putting in a lot of work, your whole team and everyone, preparing this car for not only the practice rounds, but for the final day on Sunday. The interesting thing about this particular vehicle is that you are collaborating with a big partner in Starred, correct? Correct. So can you speak to a little bit on that partnership because they're the ones that are kind of providing the powertrain and you guys are putting in a lot of work. I, I see, especially with the aerodynamics in this car, in comparison to the previous generation of the Super Van 4. We've always had a desire to come to Pikes Peak um, and with an electric van, it seemed like the ideal opportunity and our perfect partners is Stard. So, you know, with their powertrain technology, with their knowledge, you know, of, of not just not just powertrain, but they you know, they have the capability to do ground up design for the whole vehicle. So, you know, Supervan 4 actually is a transit uh, floor pan chassis. Um, Supervan 4.2 is a complete space frame. Um, so yeah, partnering with Stard wasn't a difficult choice. You touched on the aerodynamics and all the styling. So the styling is done completely by the Ford styling department, all of the, the engineers and studio guys and girls there. Um, same for Supervan 4.2. And then we've got the Ford Performance Aero team that have done all of the aerodynamics. So all of the CFD, all of the modeling, you know, to come up with all the different maps of, of how the van reacts in different scenarios, different rakes, different ride heights, you know, and that's all provided to us at Ford Performance and at Stard. So we know exactly when we do make adjustments on the mountain, we know generally what's going to happen. You know, it, it's, it's not always uh, very linear. The, the track is very bumpy in some places. You know, it's not a wind tunnel. Someone's experienced a row man, he can feel it. He, he, you've only got to make small adjustments and he knows what you've done, so yeah. It's incredible to get a driver like Roman who is so decorated specifically in endurance racing and all these electric lap times that he has set with these records at all these different types of tracks. And something about it that is whimsical and quirky kind of adds to that element. Even when we were at the practice days over this week, you could see a lot of the spectators and the competitors gather around Supervan and just giggle when it would take off because of the sheer performance, but also just the absurd nature of this. Well, exactly. I mean, it is, <laughs> it's, it's very unique and people do not expect to see a commercial vehicle race up Pikes Peak. You know, same as when Supervan 4 went to Goodwood. Ford has got a huge legacy in motorsport across decades and decades. And people do remember the previous Supervans. But when they see something as outrageous as Supervan 4.2, they are, you know, they're, it's, it's jaw dropping. They are just astounded that, that this vehicle has been built and it goes as fast as it goes. And it has the powertrain it has and the performance it has. They are just, they're just blown away. What would you say would be the impact of setting a record on Sunday. So many people have had an involvement in helping with rapid manufacturing, with steering, with, with component supply, with your procurement. And it, it's just huge. So, you know, and there's lots of people that they want a poster, they just want a, a level of involvement. And not only that, doing this kind of project really, that it enthuses employees, they really get behind it because it's different. Pushing the limits, I think that's what's so unique about it is it gets them excited about innovating and pushing the movement forward. But to that point, you do have a lot of people still that are kind of at this intersection because there is a kind of a resistance in this demographic that kind of overlaps with motorsport typically. So do you feel like Supervan is kind of the gateway to kind of bring those people together? So the more events we do and the more knowledge we spread about electric vehicles, the more knowledgeable people get and therefore the more comfortable they are. You know, those, you know, the, the, the issues you mentioned, they exist. And the only way we're going to break them down is to actually show them with true examples of what electrification um, and particular electric vehicles are capable of doing. And I think you've shown that over and over with all the demonstration vehicles that we've seen from you, Mach-E 1400. You probably got a few more up your sleeve, so I'm really excited to see that. <laughs> you know, we'll, uh, we'll make a you Ford, A Ford it. spokesman <laughs> says you, we're not allowed to talk about future products. <laughs> Good line. Um, but typically you might see in an event like this, something like a halo car as the Ford GT get electrified and take on the mountain. Uh, you, you could have said we could have done a, a GT and we could have, you know, we could have tried and, you know, and beat the, you know, the VW IDR, which obviously Roman was the driver of. But demonstrators have the ability to tell a different story, you know, and I think we get a much better story with transit than we would have done by doing 
almost a copy of, of, of something that's already existed and we're just doing it slightly faster. So True. transit just gives us a different angle um, and, and it showcases transit. It shows what big vehicles are capable of. And there was a lot of work to kind of make this work for this particular mountain. So I'll just talk a little bit about the fact that Supervan 4, the first iteration, had a quad motor setup, a little bit more performance, but you had to make some changes like going down to the three motor setup, maybe making some adjustments in getting higher power regenerative braking and things like that. So can you speak to like the technical differences? Yeah. It I mean, four, Supervan 4 was built for, you know, I call it because when we got the brief, it essentially was the Swiss army knife of Supervans. You know, it needed to uh, race on a track, do hill climb. You know, it needed to go on a rally stage. It needed a tow bar. It needed package compartment. You know, it needed a fully functional, fully operational Ford Pro sync system. You know, and it has all of that. You know, it has got absolutely everything. Not only that, it's road legal. Yeah. You know, you can drive that vehicle on the public highway because it is built to the right regulations and the right specification. So all the events we've done with that car have, or that van, have all been centered around its uniqueness. Um, but when you want to come to somewhere like Pikes Peak, you need a specific vehicle. I mean, we did come with a purpose uh, and that was to beat the Pikes Peak open record. So. The first thing was it needed to be much lighter. So, you know, we've taken out a lot of weight out of the chassis. Um, we wanted, obviously, the aerodynamics. The, 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 you know, the race starts at 11,000 something feet, you know, up to 14,000 something feet. So you need a completely different aero package. Um, and what we didn't need was things like tow bar. Um, you know, we, we're building an out and out race vehicle. So our biggest mission was to get the vehicle as light as we possibly could because everybody knows that, you know, that sucks energy. Um, and then in terms of the, the power and performance, that's where our partners at Stard are just, you know, fantastic. They do all the modeling for the energy, for the powertrain. And once you do that modeling, you end up with a certain, okay, the battery was fixed at, you know, at 50 kilowatt hours. But then once they've done their simulations, in terms of the weight, as soon as you take a motor out, there goes 35 kilograms. You know, you, you can't use the power of Supervan 4 all the way up the mountain. 2,000 horsepower is, I won't say undrivable, but on some of the turns and some of the corners, you, you could never use the energy. So it's no point having it. What you want to do is reduce the weight, reduce the energy, get to the energy point you can use, and then maximize that for, the, for as much of the run as you can. And that's where we got to. And what do you think the changes that you've made, or that's just even starting from the regular version of Supervan 4, what do those learnings have brought you to basically advance electrification in a means that we might see in the consumer level of the road cars that you produce? Is there anything that you're learning that you could bring to the table there? As you, you mentioned, regenerative braking, you know, in terms of how that reacts when the driver wants to do certain input functions, he wants the van or the, or the, or the regenerative braking and the hydraulic braking to, to work together. So, you know, we've been working on that for days and days. So that's all learning that, that we'll end up going towards our road cars because it, it's something we have knowledge of um, and that knowledge will get spread around the company. And I think it's interesting your point to regenerative braking and just in general in motorsports, you know, when you think of driving and you want to slow down a little bit, typically you're going to have a transmission where you can downshift and you can kind of control the speed a little bit more, but it's a little bit different on Supervan and electric vehicles in general, because typically you have a single speed or in the case of the first generation of Supervan, you had a two speed on the rear set of motors. So is there still that same kind of setup in this particular? This version? one, well, this one's single speed front and rear. Okay. So from that point of view, you know, we, we don't need the two speed. Um, and in, in terms of the regenerative braking, you know, I think we're up to now almost 600 kilowatts, you know, it's, it's huge. Insane. <laughs> well, it is insane, but, and that's the bit that, that's where the tuning becomes quite difficult. Yeah. Because when you do want that regenerative braking and Roman wants to roll in a corner more freely, we're finding that, that the braking, the force is still too high. So again, there's just so much tuning we can do. And I think for the Ford Performance guys, it will be invaluable. Yeah, for sure. And in that case, did the battery size change at all? Because with having that much regenerative braking coming in, I know you're climbing a mountain, so. Actually, the 50 kilowatt hour battery is about the right size for Pikes Peak. 
because you know we are like any electric vehicle. Um, you you need to maximise the energy you have to do the job it needs to do. So when we get to the top hill on Sunday, we will have depleted all the energy the battery can offer. So you could have chosen a bigger battery, but with bigger battery comes a lot more weight. So again, the modelling showed us that the 50 kilowatt hour battery we have with the pouch cells that Stard have chosen is about the ideal, you know, for, for for what we want to do with at Pikes Peak. Probably helps create some balance there too. I mean, you took a motor out, which helps with reducing the weight as you had mentioned, but the power to weight is a really important aspect to racing and especially yeah. in a, an event where you have 156 turns. <laughs> yeah, and we've, we've taken out almost 400 kilograms from Supervan 4 to 4.2 is almost 400. Wow, yeah, that's a good chunk. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Ford is getting back into Formula One and other aspects of motorsport, which is a really exciting to see because, you know, over the years we've seen that motorsport has really proven to provide some amazing technology that trickles down to the consumers in road car division. So that's really great. But is there any interest in Ford getting into the all electric racing series like a Formula E or an Extreme E? Do you ever see a path for that? involvement? I think the simple answer is yes. But, you know, we have any motorsport, any new discipline that, that comes, we always study. You know, we study it, we understand it, and then we make a call on it. And at the moment, we just haven't found the, the right series that we think gives us either the right reach or demographic or, or tells the right story in the right way. So when we do, I'm sure we'll make that step. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for spending some time with us and giving us a little bit more insight. And I will say I have gained a ton of insight here over the week, spending it with you guys, watching you prepare for the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. It's just astounding how much work that you put in to try to achieve what you want to achieve here at Pikes Peak. And it seems to me that uh, it looks like you might do some pretty amazing things come Sunday. So I hope- Appreciate it. I wish the best for you guys and for Roman and the whole team here that's working so hard behind uh, the scenes. Thank you very much. Yeah, we can look forward to it and race to the clouds. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs>